These worms don't look very happy, but where could they be? Are they trapped in a river? In a canal? In a swamp? No, they're trapped in the sump of a worm tower. Good morning. Well, it's been some time since we've done anything but worms on the channel, so I thought now is as good a time as any, seeing as everything's gone quiet for the winter and there's not a whole heap happening in the garden. So I thought today what we'd look at is the worm tower. Now, you can see why it, where it gets its name. It's a stackable system of trays. You can see the tray there on the left. Um, I think this is a sort of small to medium size. They do vary in sizes. And the idea is that you simply fill your tray full of your food waste, um, leaves and whatever else. The worms will go to work on that. And then once they've finished with that tray, you stack another tray on top. And the worms will work their way up through the holes, the grid at the bottom there, into the next tray. And process that food leaving you with a tray full of lovely vermicompost. Now, this particular one, it's about 15 and a half inches or so internally. I think it's about 16 and a half external measurements. And it's about six and a half inches deep. Um, it stands on a base. The next layer is, will typically be the sump, which is where any excess water from the system will drain into. And then you have your first tray, which is your working tray. That's the tray you're going to fill with your um, composting material. And then once that's finished, or very nearly finished, you'll stack another tray on top. And on top of that, you have a roof. So if you imagine if those two trays were working, I would then put another tray on top. That's the tray I would put my food waste into. And... Tray number one, which is the first tray on the bottom, that at this point in time would most likely be finished because at that stage any worms would have left the vermicompost, there'd be nothing much in it for them, and any cocoons would have hatched. So let's take a closer look at the inside. Now that's the roof, and one of the issues I have with this type of system is it's moulded plastic and sealed so therefore you're going to get a lot of moisture on the inside and that's going to encourage your worms to move about so you'll always find worms on the lid I've turned it that way because when we come to the sump you'll see that the moulded plastic for the roof is exactly the same as the moulded plastic for the sump with the exception that they've just drilled a hole in one side for the plug so I suppose it's a design feature it saves on manufacturing costs or whatever so that's my working tray, which is tray number two. That's By working tray, what I mean is that's the tray I'll be throwing the food waste into. Now you'll see there's an egg there. You always hear people say, add eggs to your compost. Absolutely do. Um, but if it's a worm bin, the eggs like that are no good to the worms. Now that's an on... Um, I did, that was a potato peel which I didn't freeze and thaw and you can see what happens in small worm bins like this they stay crisp for ages they take forever to break down and they'll sprout so that's your first clue this bin has been um, quite neglected for quite some time but just going back to the eggshells if you want to add eggshells that the worms can use you really need to um, grind the eggshells up that way they can take it into their gizzard and use it to break down food stuff so this is tray number one which is the bottom tray you can see there the worms making an effort to um, move between between the trays so this would this was the tray I started with so this was my working tray and then I added tray number two which became the working tray when this tray was um, pretty much finished you can see the vermicompost is really nice there a bit on the wet side <coughs> but really nice 
and you'll also notice there's quite a bit of quite a few potworms in there and that's because the bedding on this tray was a lot of leaves and where you have um, leaves as your bedding you'll you'll um, get a lot more potworms but you, the numbers are not such that they're causing a problem in the bin and they're great composters so I like to see them in there now I'll take this tray off and we'll have a look at the sump one of the things you'll have noticed is there wasn't an awful lot of worms in tray number two which is my current working tray not a lot of worms in this tray there is some cocoons that one's a bit dark in colour so it's ready to hatch but not many now in this tray I don't want to see a lot of worms because they should have left here by now and moved into tray number two that's a better example there's um, the light coloured one on the top is a freshly laid cocoon and the darker one directly underneath that one's getting ready to hatch because cocoons as they get nearer to hatching um, they go darker in colour so that tray is all but finished and as I said there wasn't that many worms in the working tray or the first tray there's some worms there moving between that tray and the sump and let's have a look at the sump now this is one of my biggest bugbears with this type of system that was all cardboard lightly damp cardboard look at the amount of worms that are now in the sump and there was nothing else in there except cardboard so that is pretty much pure worm castings made from cardboard you can see the amount of worms that are in that it can only be described as goop or mud and this is the, the somewhat uh, unfinished cardboard there but it's all it's pretty much all but gone and that's one of the reasons I put cardboard in the sump now we're going to take a little look at uh, what happens with water when it gets in there and you'll see why my thinking is the way it is on this particular system. Now I had a comment from somebody uh, on another video that said they don't really have an issue with this but to be really honest I've never got this system to work where there wasn't almost as many if not more worms down in the sump than there was in the working tray. So I've cleared that goop out and I'm adding 250 mils of water to the bottom of the sump and that takes it just to the level uh, at the bottom of the drainage hole so in other words that's the amount of water that would sit there in the sump even if the tap was open and have a look at this some very unhappy worms there those worms if nothing else is added it's, so in other words if nothing no debris falls down from the tray above to pad out that water or absorb it and there's no cardboard on it those worms will not be able to get out of that water and they live there for quite a while you can see it's one centimeter deep now they live there for quite some time they will not live there happily that's for sure and they'll eventually suffocate they breathe through their skin so when the oxygen in the water runs out they will suffocate worms do not swim and this is like I said is one of my biggest bugbears with this type of system now if I didn't add anything to the sump what I would have to do is every couple of days keep checking the sump for worms and remove them so there's the tap and it's open now I just wanted you to have a quick look at the base. The base is actually one of the trays that you use in the stackable system. It's just held onto the sump with two bolts in the corner. So if that was going to stand on a shelf or if you had it in your garden 
with the tap open, say, so that any excess fluid drained into the garden, you could actually use that uh, base as another tray, which I think is quite a good idea because I think the trays cost about 10 to 12 pound each, which seems an awful lot of money for what it is, which is just a piece of moulded plastic with holes in the bottom, but uh, however, that's just my opinion. Now, seeing as I'm reassembling this, I'm going to put cardboard in the sump, so any worms that make their way down there will have something. This is just very lightly damp, because I wanted to actually absorb any excess liquid draining off the um, trays. So if you put wet cardboard in, you've defeated the object of adding the cardboard. But then if the worms get down into here, they have something to eat. So that's the mostly finished tray back, tray one, and that's my working tray. Now I'm just going to add some food to this. Which is apples that I found on the side of the road. something you can see there's teeth marks in them so something's been eating at them but probably squirrels or rats or something I don't know so I'm gonna add a, I've added about a half a dozen and then this time I'm actually adding the food um, waste which is uh, potato peel and carrot skin but I've frozen them and then thawed them and I'm just I would do a better job of this if, if um, I was doing it properly and not just sort of for demonstration purposes but by doing this freezing and thawing you can squeeze an awful lot of um, liquid out of the food stuff before you add it to your bin so you're adding less moisture to your bin and you have no problems with the potato skin breaking down or sprouting now because of that um, goop what I've done is I've added to a layer of cardboard on the top I've, I've put half of the, the muddy mess into another bin and I'm adding half back to this tray and the idea of the cardboard is I'm just going to spread the worms out the worms will make their way now down into the food stuff just leaving behind the super saturated muddy mess which I'll then I can just pick the cardboard up and uh, remove it from the bin now I noticed this guy caught my attention because of his tail if you have a look at the tail, it's paddle shaped. So this is actually a earthworm, probably um, El Terrestris. And the paddle shape is the giveaway because what they, these worms um, make vertical burrows in the soil. And when they come out, when it's wet or at night to um, forage for food and drag the leaves back into their burrows, they anchor themselves with the tail. So if they feel a threat or sense a threat coming on, they can very quickly spring themselves back. If you, if you imagine, you know those coils kids used to play with, rolling them down the stairs, those spring coil things. If you imagine uh, gripping the end of that in one hand and stretching it out, that's what the worm does. And then as soon as you let go, it points back um, into your hand. So that's kind of how they use their tail. So that was just a quick look at the worm tower. It has been neglected for some time, I have to say. And what I was thinking of doing is um, doing a little series on the worm tower. So I was thinking of dismantling this, uh, cleaning it all out, and then basically start from scratch and doing a video, say, once a month. A bit like the way I did the um, small worm bin series. So every month I would uh, do a video, a sort of an update video, and we could look at any issues that arise from using it. And if you use this type of system, I would love to hear from you. I can see that it's aesthetically quite pleasing. Um, it would look nice in the garden. I'm not a huge fan of worm towers, but that's a personal thing to me. And it's probably to do with the fact that I've, I don't think I've ever been able to manage them properly in, in terms of preventing worms from a huge amount of worms, not the occasional worm, lots of worms getting into the sump. And I also think they're quite expensive for what they are. They're, they run at about 75 quid. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you join me in the new year for the new series.